Mexico. It's a city of non-stop activity, its massive population busy day and night. On September 19, 1985, dawn breaks on a typical autumn morning. Millions of people face the new day. Suddenly, the earth begins to writhe and buckle. A magnitude 8 earthquake strikes the city. The epicenter is off Mexico's west coast. It unleashes six times more destructive energy than the 1906 San Francisco quake. Hundreds of multi-storied buildings disintegrate into rubble. Thousands of others are severely damaged. I didn't know what was happening. Your mind is racing a thousand miles per hour. You don't know if you're already dead. The city struggles to cope as phone and electricity lines are severed, emergency services overwhelmed, and millions left to fend for themselves. Three of the city's largest hospitals are severely damaged, adding to the chaos and casualties. One of the most horrific scenes is at the Nuevo Leon, a 15-story apartment building. Of the 1,800 people who lived here, more than 600 were killed. Quatemec Avarca is a stunned witness as the Nuevo Leon falls victim to the earthquake's rage. I recall it like a nightmare because uh, this huge structure, so solid for us, in those moments uh, it was collapsing like if it was made of uh, paper, like a model that an invisible hand was pushing down. Potomac and dozens of his neighbors rush to the demolished apartment building and with their bare hands begin a desperate struggle to rescue survivors. There was a survivor, he was trapped by the debris. We couldn't move the um, concrete above him. It was so, so heavy. I was uh, holding the right hand of this man, uh, trying to encourage him. He was complaining, this is so painful, it hurts. And uh, he died. The death toll is estimated at anywhere between nine and 35,000. The true number may never be known. Why was this mighty city victim to such devastation? Mexico City is in the center of the country, hundreds of kilometers away from the earthquake's epicenter. And why were some areas practically annihilated while others were left untouched? For seismologists like Sina Lomnitz, this disaster would change their understanding of seismic waves. There are various surprising factors that intervened to cause this particular earthquake to be a disaster. The quake was triggered by movements of the Cocos Plate, which collides with the North American Plate off Mexico's west coast. Unlike the San Andreas Fault, where two plates are sliding past each other, Mexico is the scene of a tectonic head-on collision called a subduction zone. Normally, one plate slides smoothly under the other, but when a section becomes stuck, enormous pressure builds up in the rock. On that fateful morning, the pressure finally becomes too much. A section of the Cocos subduction zone rips apart, blasting a massive shockwave of seismic energy towards Mexico at thousands of kilometers per hour. During most earthquakes, the greatest damage occurs close to the epicenter. This one is different. Coastal areas suffer some significant damage. But Mexico City, located 322 kilometers inland, bears the biggest brunt of the earthquake. Bizarrely, most of the city is barely damaged, while small, specific areas are almost completely destroyed. Buildings between 6 and 15 stories high suffer the most. 
shorter and taller structures in the same block survive virtually unscathed. To solve the perplexing mysteries, Lomnitz and his colleagues searched directly beneath their feet. Mexico City has a rather unusual location for a large city. 700 years ago, what today is Mexico City was a lake. The Aztecs built their capital city, Tenochtitlan, on an island in the middle of the lake. It was a massive complex of canals and causeways, with a structure as complex as any European city at the time. When the Spanish conquistadors captured and totally destroyed Tenochtitlan, they filled in the lake and constructed their own city directly on top of it. Centuries later, this turned out to be a very bad idea. The uh, sedimentary layer on which the downtown area is built is a layer of very soft clay. It's practically a jelly. It's almost water. This ancient lake bed holds the key to the earthquake's strangely selective damage patterns. Over the first three days after the earthquake, we realized that uh, severe damage, structural damage, had only occurred on the former lake area. The layer of soft lake bed was not just unstable, it acted like a seismic amplifier, trapping seismic waves and actually boosting their strength. Just like jelly will keep wobbling long after you shake it, the layer of mud under Mexico City continued to shake for four minutes after the earthquake. This is the major cause of the disaster. But that didn't solve the mystery of why buildings between six and 15 stories suffered the most damage. The answer came in the form of another destructive combination of seismic waves and loose sediments, a phenomenon known as resonance. Every object has a certain frequency that makes it resonate. If a singer hits the right note, they can shatter a glass just by subjecting it to its unique resonant frequency. Even a large object like a high-rise building can resonate. Depending on its size and structure, there is one energy frequency that will make it vibrate. By incredibly bad luck, the seismic waves trapped and amplified by the layer of mud under Mexico City were exactly the right frequency to make six to 15 story buildings resonate. The buildings began to vibrate, shaking themselves to pieces. Others smashed into their neighbors like battering rams. These freak circumstances doomed Mexico City. Many important facilities, such as hospitals and schools, were in the fatal size range singled out by the earthquake's fury. The Mexico City quake was a tragic example of the dangers of building on soft or reclaimed land. The unstable soils amplified the quake's effects and unleashed complex and deadly patterns of resonance. Today, buildings cannot be constructed on the unstable lake bed. Building codes and civil emergency plans are enforced to help prevent future disaster. The people of Mexico City know they're at risk from earthquakes. But millions of others live in striking distance of rare, mysterious quakes and don't even know it. And we're moving closer to an even bigger quake, a potential scenario that will combine liquefaction, fire and other deadly side effects in a brutal mega-disaster. San Francisco and Mexico City both fell victim to earthquakes spawned by the volatile boundaries between tectonic plates. Half the world's large cities are within striking distance of major faults like this, but the other half are not necessarily out of danger. There is a totally different type of earthquake. These rare rogue events strike seemingly from nowhere, ravaging areas thought to be immune to earthquakes. Hello. 
January 26 is India's Independence Day. But in 2001, the celebrations are forgotten when a massive earthquake strikes the western province of Gujarat. The 7.7 .7 quake destroys the historic city of Bhuj, along with many other nearby towns and cities. 20,000 people are killed and a million homes lost or damaged. 200 villages are wiped from the map. Paul Bowden is a Memphis, Tennessee-based seismologist who traveled to India to study the quake. What we saw was an immense amount of devastation. The uh, human toll was incredible. It was a horrible place uh, to actually be doing the work that we had to do. For scientists like Bowden, the most stunning aspect of the quake is not the scale of the damage, but the fact that it occurred at all. According to the theory of plate tectonics, this earthquake should not have happened. Central Asia is no stranger to deadly quakes. Over a billion people live close to a massive tectonic collision as the Indian plate plows head on into the rest of Asia. The Himalayas, the largest continental mountain range on Earth, are the crumpled wreckage of this collision. This volatile plate boundary has spawned numerous deadly earthquakes. The 2005 Kashmir quake killed almost 80,000 people in Pakistan and northern India. It was magnitude 7.6, not huge, but powerful enough to flatten hundreds of thousands of buildings. But Bhuj is 200 kilometers away from the dangerous Himalayan plate boundary. Large earthquakes shouldn't happen here. But there's these, these rogue 5% that happen away from plate boundaries. And we don't have a very good understanding of why, of what drives these kind of earthquakes. These mysterious rogue disasters are called intraplate quakes. The 2001 Bouge earthquake was an important opportunity to study one of these rare events. But Bowden and his team had a more urgent reason to travel from Memphis to India. The largest intraplate earthquakes in history happened right in their own backyard. In the winter of late 1811 and early 1812, the Midwest of the United States was torn apart by a swarm of massive earthquakes. They were probably bigger than any quake to hit California and are named after an ordinary town with an extraordinary secret, New Madrid. The magnitude of each can only be estimated since seismic recording instruments didn't exist, but there is no doubt they were huge. The first, estimated at magnitude 8, hits on the 16th of December, 1811. Houses and buildings are torn apart, entire forests are wiped out. Enormous cracks split and tear the earth. The placid Mississippi becomes a raging torrent of